Hello, shooters. My name is James Soule, and you're watching the American Trigger Sports Network, the only network dedicated to your sport. This week, we'll be taking you out to the National Sporting Clays Championship in San Antonio, Texas. This annual event welcomes top athletes from around the world each year to beautiful San Antonio, Texas in October of each year. Whether you're a sporting clay shooter or one of the fans who just enjoys the challenge of watching the very best shooters pitted against the very best trap setters, this is the place to be. As you can see, we arrived before dawn just as many of the shooters were arriving. And as soon as we had light, we headed into the air for a bird's eye view of the field of fire. This is the NSA, NSSA, NSCA main headquarters. And this is, see, right down below you, right down below you now, you're looking down on the red course, actually. And there, as you can see, uh, they're down there. They are setting up some of the trap fields. Uh, and they, they will begin here in the next couple of days. Monday, actually, we'll launch the FETAS. And then Thursday, you will see some... Uh, action there at the red course. Now you'll see below us, uh, well, this is where the Craigoff Cup is taken, the K Cup as we refer to it, one of the shoots that I personally enjoy and sometimes even have time to, to participate in between uh, working them with the cameraman. And then here, you were, again, these are some more of the skeet fields, not involved in our event uh, right at this moment. However, there is some, oh, I see, right now you're passing over to your right. Yeah, we're right over the RV park right now. This is where the parties will go on. Next time you see this picture, you'll see nothing but RVs back to back and people moving around. Off to the, and just the other side of those, you'll see those long buildings. Those long buildings, that's the vendor's row. And now here to the left, we're going over the Beretta Pavilion. And this is, again, another area just the left of the Beretta building. You'll see where the blue tent is again. You'll see there's some more of the PTAS area. And now we'll swing around a little bit more to our right. And we'll show you where the pond is. And we'll look back again at some of the fields that we are shooting over the course of the next five days. Yeah, no, you can come right right, right between the pond and, and kind of go back that way. Right. And then we'll have a look at the some of the game area, right? We're, we're crossing now. We're coming down. These are some of the gaming areas right below us, and which are leading up to, which is right there. That is, and we might just pause there a second if we could. Uh, that is where the shoot-off will take place, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the HOA for 2010 will be determined. Right there where you see those grandstands and bleachers, that's where it will be determined, right there. And long, yeah, from, and as you work your way a little bit forward this way, Wade, down below us, that's some of the five-stand area, it, it, and practice five-stand and real five-stand. And when we come back, we'll have the winner of the 2010 National Championship, Brad Kidd Jr. Okay, I caught Brad Kidd here driving by. He just stopped by to say hello. Uh, what's up? Same old, same old. Getting acclimated. Getting acclimated. Yeah. Who you got with you this morning? Oh, this is a good friend of mine, Rain Bennett. How Rain, you doing, Rain? Rain, Bennett. Rain, where are you from, Rain? Uh, originally from North Carolina. We grew up together, living in New York now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You went from North Carolina to New York? That's right, that's right. Okay, I guess there was <laughs> a pretty good reason for that. Yeah, yeah, there was. A uh, little bit of work, a little bit of play, but I, I do get a lot of flack from the folks back home. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can tell you, you don't get any more flack than I do being a Texas guy, being in California. There you go. I, I know exactly what you're doing. So, uh, are we going to see you in a winning circle this year? We're pretty good this year, James. We're working hard coming in this shoot. Uh, on about 17 straight days of practice. Been finishing well over the last couple months. So, got a lot of confidence coming in this week. I'm looking forward to seeing how it turn out. All right. Good luck to you. We'll see you along the line, and you can watch for us. We'll be in the air. We'll be looking yeah. right at you. Yeah, that's good. All right. Thanks, James. All right. Hey, that's Brad Kidd. Now, I can tell you right now that of all the people that I know in shooting, Brad Kidd's one of the friendliest guys. You can always come up to Brad Kidd no matter where he is, as long as he's not in the state for shooting. And other than that, you can always approach Brad, and he'd love to talk to you about the shooting sports. He's damn good at it. That's all I can say.
Okay, well, speaking of Brad Kidd, there he is right there. How you doing, champ? Good, James. Good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, good to see you, too. I understand you settled into uh, Houston, Texas. Yeah, sure did. Got moved over to uh, the southwest side here in Sugar Land a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, good place. Fresh new start here in Houston. Pretty much the capital of sporting clays. So it's good, it's good to be here. I really like it over this side. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions. You know, a few years back, uh, I kind of nicknamed you and, and your partners there the Fab Four of sporting clay. So you and Zach and Corey and Anthony seem to always shoot together. So that's how you ended up with that nickname. Now, I, I got to tell you that going into the Nationals, and, and the crew and I do pistol, rifle, we do a lot of different events, we always kind of bet on who's going to walk away with the trophy that day. Uh, we do a little side betting. And, you know, I got to tell you that odds are that, you know, uh, we kind of thought that based upon, you know, Brandon Powell, uh, that he was probably going to walk away with that. Uh, I mean, we, we're very happy for you. I mean, I, I agreed with the girls that you would probably do it, but some of the guys in the crew were kind of betting on Brandon. Well, James, that's, that's a great pick, obviously. Brandon's been there time and time again. Uh, I think this he's been runner-up four times on the podium six or seven times. So he's as consistent and as dangerous as anybody at the national championship. And, and that's obviously a good pick. Brandon's always right there. Um, he hadn't done it yet, but uh, I'm sure in the near future, Brandon will get him a win. Okay, so did, let me just ask you this then. So at that point, uh, I mean, did you think on day one of Sporting Clays that on the last day you'd be standing on the top tier of that award? <laughs> platform accepting the HOA award? James, to be completely honest with you, um, I, I really did. Uh, not only did I, I think, I, I convinced myself for months leading up to that championship that I was going to be standing on top. Uh, confidence is everything in this game, and, and I trained hard. Uh, I felt like the ability was there. I felt like I was really peaking in terms of, of where my shooting career has been. Um, and I, I believed it. I talked about it. I, I told people I was going to win, and uh, I was convinced that I was going to walk out of there with the trophy. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that, actually, because uh, uh, we, we know that confidence, you're absolutely correct. Confidence is what this game is all about. Any of the shooting sports, it's all about confidence. And we talk to a lot of people throughout many disciplines, and usually you, can, you get a sense for who's going to be out there in front. That's how we hedge our bets on the side, by speaking to them beforehand. So speaking of training, then after last year, and last year you came in uh, where? Last year I don't remember. It was probably somewhere around 10th to 15th maybe. Okay. Uh, wasn't my best performance. Uh, so I had a lot of work to do to get ready for the you know this year coming up. Okay, so did you train differently? Did you train more? I mean, what did you do? I mean, at some point last year, and maybe it was last year at the end of Nationals, you said to yourself, hey, you know what? I, I got to do more work here. So what did you do? Hey, yeah, it, was a, it was a process that, that took really seven or eight months to kind of realize some things I needed to work on, some changes I needed to make. Uh, for the first six or, or seven months of the season, I shot as, as well as anybody for three quarters to maybe, maybe seven eighths of a tournament. Um, I'd shoot a great score Saturday. I'd come into Sunday and, and I'd get to where I had three or four stands to go. And a lot of major championships this year, if I hit my targets in the last three or four stands, I'd walk away the winner. Um, but I always struggled on those last few stations. Uh, something changed to me where I got a little defensive, uh, trying to kind of protect a good score going down the stretch. So. Uh, I kind of realized that, that you know something was going on there, and uh, through through help of some good friends of mine, uh, Ben Huswick, who was actually the 2010 World Champion, he convinced me that I needed a mental routine to make every shot the same, uh, something to go to, to to where you're so involved in the routine that it doesn't matter if it's a pair in practice or the pair to win the national championship. Uh, there's no such thing as an easy or a hard target. Basically, every single pair takes the same amount of energy, the same amount of focus, the same amount of effort. And what that did for me, it made it a one-target tournament. It was one target at a time. One-target tournament. Brad, hold that thought. i got a lot more questions for you, but we've got to take this break. We'll be right back.
Pumping right now, ain't it? Holy <laughs> crap, Andy! I'm so happy <laughs> for you. <laughs> hey, James. Hey, congratulations, uh, man. Thank you. It, it, definitely your turn. Ooh, that day. What was that? That was a good save right there, my man. <laughs> 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 definitely. No. What? What do you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Considering you. years gone past, what have you done different this year to win it? I did a, a lot different. I mean, I just grew as a person more than anything. Um, I've done this my whole life. I've wanted this my whole life. Um, I worked on the mental side. Really, it was it, honestly, it was about having great friends that have kept me a positive person my whole life. I've had the most incredible instructors in the world, and just everything just clicked for me. Everything was right. Um, I was just in a good place. It was simple as that. I went out and had fun, and I've been working hard, and it just happened. It just did. You know. Okay. Hey, there's nothing more you can say. No. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're glad that you spent some time with us. And you earned this, Thanks, man. James. Thanks, James. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I got my, my first limelight on your show, man. I'll That's never right. forget that, James. That's I'll never forget right. that. I felt like part of the crew. <laughs> hey, watch ATSN. You got it. <laughs> I mean, those moments are, are golden. I tell you, it's, it's unbelievable to, to get there and watch that and relive some of those moments. Um, you know, it, it just brings chills to me. Uh, you know, something I've always wanted my entire life, and, and to finally get it done, um, it, it's incredible to see some of those moments on film. It, it, I can't tell you the feeling. Yeah. Tell me how many uh, Sporting Clays championships and nationals, I'm sorry, how many times have you gone to nationals? Ooh, I shot uh, my first nationals in 92. Um, so I'm, I'm close to 20. I missed a few years. You know, I was out of the sport for five or six years, so I missed three or four nationals uh, in those years. So I've shot 16 or 17 national championships, maybe. So you've seen a lot of people who stood on that upper tier where you oh, did. Bunches, yeah, bunches. And, and I can't tell you how happy I was to finally climb up there and make it up there. Yeah. Well, let me, let, let me back up a little bit because as that week went on and, and – and, all of the shooters, as you get towards the closing of the week, everybody gets very concerned about their scores, whether they're going to be HOA or whether they're going to come in fifth at uh, D class. It doesn't make any difference. Everybody's tension and focus changes towards the end of the week. Now, I can, I can say this honestly, and I, and I mean it with tongue in cheek and joking. I mean, you and I are friends. I, I know that I tried to approach you a couple of times towards the end of the week there, and, and you looked at me, and your eyes kind of glazed over a little bit, and you really didn't want to spend too much time in front of the cameras. Now, was that a focus thing? Absolutely, was a focus thing, James. I, I just uh, I wanted to keep that in intensity and that focus really the entire weekend. And you've got to limit the distractions. Uh, it's tough to do sometimes. There's a lot of people there, a lot of good friends, a lot of cameras, a lot of crews that, that want to talk to you, but. You know, limiting the focus was something I knew I had to do. So I really tried to focus while I was out there on whether it be my warm up and preparation, uh, shooting my round. And when I got done, I, I tried to get back to the hotel and just kind of stay low key for the weekend and, and limit those distractions. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I know, for instance, that Andy Duffy is that way. And, and Andy, I think, has been three times world, I mean, uh, three times national champion. I think he holds a record for that. But you will notice, and I know you notice, and I do too, that at any of those shoots, he gets in there, he's really concentrating on what he does. And at the end of that time, you know, he probably disappears back to his hotel room and, uh, and, and, and continues to focus on the next day's event. He doesn't get distracted a lot. And you had some distractions. Brad, that other people, you know, probably, I mean, you had a friend of yours, Rain, who, who was on the first clip that we ran there. He was actually filming you for a reality show while you were doing this. Yeah, and that was a bit of a distraction. Um, something I tried to tell myself wasn't, but as the week went on, I, I started realizing it was. So I overcame it. I, don't ask me why or how. Uh, it almost kind of seemed like it was meant to be type thing, but. Uh, yeah, we had camera crews rolling around us, you know, 24 hours a day that entire weekend and, and a lot of different characters involved. So 
uh, very involved in, in you know that reality TV show. So it was a bit of a distraction, but somehow I was able to stay focused on the round. Once I got out there on the course, uh, it got to where everything else disappeared. You know, the cameras weren't there. You know, nothing else was there. It was just me and the target. So a lot of that was like we talked about earlier, that mental routine I had worked on, really uh, diving in that routine and, and being able to just stay focused on the one target that I had to break, just one at a time. Yeah, right. Actually, when we talked to George Digweed and we brought him in from the U.K. a couple of times over the past year, uh, he tells me that, you know, I'm, I'm a very friendly guy until I step into the station. And when I step into the station, I'm going to use his words, it's like shutters come down. And I don't see anything except what's at the end of my barrel and how to get in front of it. Exactly. And you've got to want to kill what's out there in front of your barrel. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I don't want to say shooting with anger, but there's some intensity involved. And, and that's what it's like. You, you've got to shut everything else behind you. You know, in our sport, we've got golf carts riding around, people behind you talking. There's a lot of things that could, if you let them suck you in, can become distracting. So you've really got to be able to maintain that focus out in the field with, you know, the, the task at hand, which is breaking that clay. Okay, good. We'll be right back because I want to ask you about the All-American team because I know you're a member of it. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, we're back with Brad Kidd, this year's 2010 National Sporting Clays Champion. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with the NSCA and how it's organized, there are teams within teams. Now, Brad, can you take just a minute and tell us what the All-American team is? Absolutely, James. Uh, the All-American team is, is basically, uh, it's our ranking system through the year. So for 2010, every NSCA registered shoot, uh, depending on how many uh, competitors are in the tournament and where you place in the tournament, you gain points through that. So it's, it's pretty much our ranking system for, uh, for the year. Uh, the top ten make the first team, uh, the next ten will make the second team, and the third ten will make the third All-American team. Okay, and I think right now, uh, let's see, I know you're on that team. I'm not sure what the rankings are because I only get the information through, like most of us do, through the Sporting Clays magazine, and sometimes they're delayed. Now, I know that you're on there with some, you know, John Kruger, Corey Cruz. I mean, I mean all the big guns are on there. Oh, yes, sir. It, it's, a, it's a name filled with, with talented people. The, the list goes on and on. There's so many good shooters in the United States right now. It's really difficult to make that team. I'm very proud to say I've made first team All American in the last two years, and uh, I've made All American I think 14 or 15 times in my career. So very proud to be able to, to say that. Okay, let me ask you this: Are you going to go to World All Around here to, uh, pretty soon, and uh, are you going to shoot uh, English as well? Oh yes, sir. I'll be there. I'll be at the World English coming up here, and just just a few weeks away. So. You know, it's time to start getting prepared for that. Uh, hopefully, I, I take my stature from a national champion to a world champion. I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Okay, so are you uh, going out to, I know some of those ranges around Houston. Do you favor one range over the other for your practice? I really, there's three I shoot at a lot. I shoot at American Shooting Center, I shoot at Rio Brazos, and I shoot at Great, uh, Greater Houston Gun Club. And what I love about that, all three of these places are within half an hour of my house. So, I'm really able to mix up the different places. They've got a little different terrain, a little different background. So uh, I'm very fortunate to have three different places to practice. So I've got a wide variety of targets and, you know, three good locations to go practice at. Okay. How about Westside? You know, last time I was there, Westside had a range. Uh, are they still uh, using that range? Yeah, Westside does too. And Westside's not far from me at all. It's about 45 minutes away. So I don't get there as much, but Westside's a great place as well and one that I do go practice at. Okay, now that you're in Texas, are you going to compete at the Texas State? Oh, sure will. It's at American Shooting Center this year, uh, first week of June, and very much looking forward to that. Uh, it'll be my first year as a, a Texas resident, um, so I'm looking forward to going and competing and trying to uh, bring home a, a Texas State title. Okay, so you have actually changed your residency with the NSCA, and you can actually compete now with uh, some of those guys in Texas. And there's a lot of guys in Texas who are shooters. <laughs> a bunch, a bunch. You've got so many great shots in Texas. I, you've got probably half the All American team from Texas. So the competition <laughs> here is as good as anywhere else. And there's really there's not a state shoot title that you can achieve that that's of you know greater importance than the Texas State. It really means a lot to win that tournament, and I'm going to give it my best shot this year. 
Okay, well, we're going to be out there. We're going to be filming all those shoots that, you're, that we just talked about, and we'll be out there with the ATSN helicopter on all of those. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes with us, and uh, hey, we look forward to seeing you in the winter circle all over the country. So uh, thanks again, and congratulations, Brad. Uh, it, it's been a good year for you. Absolutely, James. Thank you very much. Okay. It really has. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Shooters, I'm glad we had a chance to talk to Brad Kidd Jr., the 2010 HOA champion. I've known Brad a long time. He's a great shot and very deserving of that award. Hope you enjoyed today's show, and remember, for the latest in your Second Amendment rights, more interviews with your favorite competitors and celebrities, go to our website at ATSN.TV. Hey, see you again next week.